as of today, we have 125 reported. We do have, we are now starting to track the number of recovered as well. So we're looking at the data as it comes out a little differently now. And we, our last number in Amory, 29? 29. 29 recovered uh, as well. So that kind of balances out those increases as we see that go up. Uh, but also, we're starting to now shift slightly um, as we continue and we feel that we're at the peak uh, and you know, following along with the, the governor and how the Commonwealth is doing uh, in thinking about and begin to put the thumbnail sketch together for uh, what reopening looks like and how that impacts town and how that impacts town services and what does you know, we're open for business look like? Does it mean that six foot social distancing will still be in place? And right now the answer is yes. Uh, if you come to town hall, will you have to wear a mask? Probably so. Um, and then how does that translate into the community and into the rest of the town and what does that look like? So we've got some great uh, department heads uh, and directors in the town that we're starting to now look at that as to be ready for that when it does happen. So <clears throat> actually, uh, just not on any EMS run, but on any call that comes into 911, uh, there's a set of questions that the dispatchers are asking the person. Uh, are you experiencing any kind of symptoms like a fever, a cough, a sore throat? Anybody in your household that is experiencing one of those symptoms, you're asking, you're being asked those questions. So um, expect that to occur, and that's just being done for us to triage our calls better and to make sure that our personnel are, are in the appropriate PPE. I mean, we are uh, looking at the this week, next week, as potentially being the peak, but the concern is that there may be waves, and part of that concern is that as people get um, antsy, you know, they've been in the houses for such a long time and start as things are released, people may not be careful. And so we're going to see more exposure and we will see our numbers jump back up again. Um, so, it, you know, we have to be careful with that. I know people are pushing, and we're seeing that all the time, but I just have a concern that people are just pushing a little too soon because I think we still have a couple more weeks um, that we're going to see numbers continue to rise. Uh, I had three predictions so far of a closing of schools. Those were right. This would be the fourth prediction, whether or not we go back. I think we will go back in September. And the question is, what's it going to look like? I think it's going to look vastly different compared to what it looked like in September of 2019. September of 2020 will look nothing like that opening. I can't imagine there being 700 people in the cafetorium that are our staff members waiting to hear the opening speech and kickoff ceremony that we have planned unless some way, somehow, there's a vaccine that's distributed to people that prevents this virus from spreading. If not, we're going to put people together again like that and what we're going to do is we're just going to perpetuate the spread of the virus if anyone's infected with it, and there's going to be a spike. And then if there's a spike, then people are going to have to be intubated. And are there enough respirators in our system? And then all of a sudden we're going to exacerbate a problem where people aren't going to be able to receive the health care that they need because there's so many people who need it all at once. So we need to flatten this curve, and I think it's going to need to be flattened on multiple times, not just a single time like we see unless that some sort of a medication to treat it uh, effectively or a vaccination to eradicate it comes up and we can treat it like we did measles where it could be gone and eradicated. So uh, will we open up in September? We will. It's going to look a lot different. The state's coming up with models to uh, decide on how that would look. Uh, the, the Commissioner Riley had mentioned uh, information to us as superintendents about potentially having uh, this, these are all just ideas. There's nothing in concrete here. They're throwing ideas out there to see what's going to stick, and they're running through a bunch of different vetting tools for it. Do you have the digital thermometers that are set up at a distance of maybe more than six feet, could be 12 feet, where you're coming into the room, and this takes a thermal image of yourself to see what your temperature is, and someone's behind the other monitor to say whether or not you can even walk into the building. It could look like that. It could look like the option to have people remain uh, through remote learning and they can have remote learning if they don't want to come into the buildings, but at the same time, a certain group of people can come in the buildings. Do you have waves of people come in? Maybe it's grade one on a Monday. It's grade two on a Tuesday. And then you couple it with remote learning and also open the physical buildings up. So they have a bunch of models that the state the Department of Education is running through, and they're supposed to release those models at a later date yet to be determined. 
Uh, so I think we're going to be open. I think it's going to look incredibly different than what it looks like in September of the past year. And I think people need to remain flexible and understand that ultimately we're just trying to keep people in, in society as safe as possible to reduce the number of mortalities that we go through because of the COVID virus. My responsibility is to make sure that when non-essential businesses in town are allowed to open, that we do the best job we possibly can uh, to maximize revenue, if that makes sense, or you know, become economically robust again. Um, I've been attending webinars, uh, you know, seeking information about ways to recover from all this, and there's a fair amount of information now being circulated. And the ideas that I've gotten and have um, kind of benchmarked with some of the business people in town uh, are communicating thoroughly with as many people as can listen or read uh, what's open, when they'll be open, what services they provide, what their hours will be, and what we've decided to do is starting next Thursday, May 1st, we'll be publishing a weekly newsletter. Uh, there'll be a link to it on the town website initially until I figure out a better way to distribute it, but talking just about that. Who, when can we expect business to open? And we may, may have a better idea about it than we do now. Who's open? Who isn't open? What services and so on are provided by the people who are opening? When will they open? Those kinds of things. Um, we've put up on the town website already a list of the restaurants and bars that are offering takeout service. And we update that as we learn about things. Some people open up and that were closed and vice versa. So we, we update that on a daily basis. And so we'll be communicating that sort of thing uh, at least weekly, if not more so. Um, whether or not more than six people are allowed into a, or, you know, people have to maintain six feet distance when they go into a restaurant or a bar is, is certainly beyond my control. But when they open, how they open, what they'll provide, that's, it, it falls on us to communicate all that. So the state had the, uh, between the, the, the House and the Senate Ways and Means Committee um, meet uh, last week and they discussed and we heard a, a number of panel members that came in and discussed what the potential impact would be. It, it, it's obvious. There's going to be a downturn in receipts from April to June. Um, so we expect it. What we don't know and what I don't know today is what that overall impact will be. Right? There are some. There are still some restaurant receipts that are happening. People are still paying uh, you know, their mortgage payments. And, uh, but some people are now unemployed. Um, and going through difficult times. So it, it is changing, but it's something that it does keep me up at night. And we're looking at you know, making sure that the town can still provide all of the essential services uh, that it does to our residents. So once the state gets an idea, an understanding of where they're at and potentially tapping into the stabilization fund to uh, help make us whole here at the local level, they'll give us a budget and then we'll react accordingly and. Uh, do the very best with what we have. And I know you've been jotting down notes. Is there anything we haven't covered that? No, I was just uh, saying that uh, <laughs> that Anne Marie took the, my uh, thunder for the uh, uh, the, the Lenore's Pantry and the North Nurses Care Hotline. So, but I, I will say this, right? Um, one day this will all pass, right? And, and we're going to come out on the other end. But on the mean in the meantime. Make sure you social distance, stay that six feet apart, wash your hands, um, wear a mask, and stay safe. Take care of your family, right? Check on your neighbors. A lot of seniors in our town. We've got to take care of them too. They're that, you know, they've been a part of the fabric a lot longer than most of us have. So let's make sure that we reach out to them. And we are going to recover. Uh, and we are going to figure out what the new normal looks like. And North Attleboro will flourish.